So in the last video, we learned what these batteries do. These batteries have spontaneous reactions that make one lead high in electric potential and another lead lower in electric potential. And so therefore, we're going to have this difference in electric potential, which we know is simply a voltage. A voltage is just a difference in electric potential. So if we have a 12 volt battery, we know we're going to have a difference of 12 volts between these two leads. So let's say that this lead is at positive 12 volts, and let's say this lead is at zero volts, and therefore we have this difference of 12 volts. We have this difference of electric potential of 12 volts. So now that we do this, what's going to happen? Well, we know these negatively charged electrons are going to want to flow towards regions of higher electric potential. And again, and again, the negatively, any negatively charged particle wants to flow towards regions of higher electric potential that are more positive and higher electric potential. So now we're going to have a current. But something important to realize is that this lead that's at positive 12 volts is connected to this entire part of the circuit, connected to this conductive wire in this entire part of the circuit. So therefore, this entire part of the circuit is at positive 12 volts because they're directly connected. And we know this lead, which is at zero volts, is directly connected to this entire part of the circuit. So this entire part of the circuit is at zero volts. So notice what happens. We we're at positive 12 volts, positive 12 volts, and then once we run across a resistor, we have a drop in voltage. We go from positive 12 volts to zero volts, so we have this drop in voltage, and then we're at zero volts the rest of the way. And that's something to just be familiar with. Whenever we have resistors, we have drop in voltages. That's what resistors do. They have they have they make drops in voltages. So again, so so that's what's going on. So now let's do a different example. Let's say we have this, this battery, this, this circuit. Let's say we have this circuit. So again, we have a 12 volt battery. We have a 12 volt battery. So therefore, this lead is going to be 12 volts higher than this lead. We're going to have this different relative difference of 12 volts. And again, we explain that this lead is directly connected to this entire part of the circuit. So this entire part of the circuit is going to be at positive 12 volts. And then again, this lead is at zero volts, which is connected to this entire part of the circuit. So this entire part of the circuit is at zero volts. So notice we're at positive 12 volts, and then we come across a resistor, and we know what happens once we come across resistors. We have a drop in voltage, and then we're going through here, and then we come across another resistor. So we're going to have another drop in voltage, and then we're going to be at zero volts. So therefore, we know we're at positive 12 volts here and zero volts here. So we know the total drop in voltage will be 12 volts. The drop in voltage here plus the drop in voltage here will equal 12 volts. So how do we determine exactly how much drop in voltage we have in this resistor and exactly how much drop in voltage we have in this resistor? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to find the current going through the circuit. You need to find the current. So how do you find the current going through this circuit? Well, again, we know how to do this. We use Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. And again, this Ohm's law, this voltage equals current times resistance, models this circuit. And therefore, if we know the voltage of the circuit and we know the total resistance of the circuit, which we plug in here, we can find the current going through the circuit. So again, so again, we know the voltage is 12 volts, and we know that equals the current times the overall resistance of the circuit. So how do we find the overall resistance of the circuit? Well, again, we learned in the last video how we do this. We learned in the last video how we do this. If you have resistors in series, you simply just add them. The, if you have a 3 ohm resistor and you have a 9 ohm resistor in series, if you add them, you get 12 ohm resistor. So a 3 ohm resistor and a 9 ohm resistor is identical to having a 12 ohm resistor. A 12 ohm resistance is identical to a 3 and a 9 ohm resistor in series. So we know this, this resistor represents these resistors. So we know this circuit, which is essentially identical to this circuit, we know we have an overall resistance of 12 ohms. So we know this circuit has an overall resistance of 12 ohms, and we know this circuit has an overall resistance of 12 ohms. And again, we, we explain that. So we know the overall resistance of the circuit is 12 ohms. So now we could solve for the current of, of these circuits. The, the current must be 1 amp. But now that we solve this, now that we solve that we have a 1 amp current going through this circuit, so, so now we're done with this guy, so, so let's get rid of this guy. So now that we know we have a 1 amp current flowing through the circuit, Something important to realize is that 
if we, if we solve using this equation that we have a one amp current, then that means at this point, we have one amp of current flowing through. And at this point, we have one amp of current flowing through. And at this point, we have one amp of current flowing through. And at this point, we have one amp flowing through. If we get, if we got a value of one amp, then at any given point, you can choose any arbitrary point, you know, we have one amp of current flowing through. So therefore, if you chose this resistor, you know, you have one amp of current flowing through. And that's just something you need to be familiar with. And it's something you need to learn about these circuits that the current is essentially the its conservation of charge if you have one current flowing through here then you have one current flowing through here it doesn't make sense that you would have three current cur amps of current flowing through here and then maybe one amp of current flowing through here and then maybe half an amp of current flowing through here the charge is conserved so you have one amp of current flowing through every region so now that we know this we know we have one amp of current flowing through this circuit i mean this resistor one amp of current flowing through this resistor and we know we have one amp of current flowing through this resistor. And again, we know we have one amp of current flowing through any given region, including this region and this region. So now that we know this, we can determine the voltage drop on this resistor and we can determine the voltage drop on this resistor. How do we, how we use this equation? We essentially use this equation. The, the voltage drop, the delta V, the voltage drop of a resistor equals the current flowing through that resistor multiplied by the resistance of that resistor. So again, notice the differences between these equations. This equation is used describing the entire circuit. If you know the total voltage of the circuit and the total resistance of the circuit, you can find the current flowing through the circuit. However, this equation is applied to an individual resistor. If you know the current flowing through a resistor, an individual resistor, and you know the resistance of the resistor, you can find the drop in voltage of that resistor. So therefore, we could simply solve this. We have one amp of current flowing through this resistor, one amp of current flowing through, and we have a resistance of three ohms, a three ohm resistor. We would get a, a delta V of three volts. We would have a delta V, a, dro a, a drop in voltage of three volts. So therefore, we know we have a drop in voltage of three volts, of three volts. So therefore, if we're at positive 12 volts, then we have a drop in voltage of three volts. Then we know this region would be at positive nine volts. So now let's find the drop in voltage here. And again, we know if this part is positive nine volts and this is zero volts, then we know it must be nine volts. We know that has to be true, but let's prove that. How do we find the drop in voltage of a resistor? Well, again, we use this equation, the drop in voltage of a resistor equals the current flowing through the resistor multiplied the resistance of the resistor. So again, the current flowing through this resistor is one amp. And we know the resistance of this resistor is nine ohms. So now solving this, we would get a delta V of 9 volts. So we know we would have a drop in voltage of 9 volts in this resistor. And again, that's just what we said. If we had positive 9 volts here and 0 volts, we had to have a drop of 9 volts. And again, that's what we proved. And something important to realize is we learned in a previous video that the resistance of a resistor is constant. That's not changing. If we have a 9 ohm resistor, it's a 9 ohm resistor, and that's not changing. It's due to its 3D physical geometry and, and its intrinsic properties of this material, of this resistor. So we know if we have a 9 ohm resistor, that's constant. So therefore, the more current we have going through a resistor, the higher the drop in voltage, just using this equation. So again, what this equation tells us is that we can use this equation, which is essentially used on a single resistor, or we can use this equation, which is used for an entire circuit. So, so those are just some rules you need to be familiar with with circuits. So now let's do a different example. Let's say we have this circuit. So again, we have this 10 volt battery. So we know this one is going to be at positive 10 volts. And we know this one's going to be at zero volts because we have a, a 10 volt battery, a difference of 10 volts. So we know this entire part of the circuit is at positive 10 volts. So, so again, we see it's all connected, it's all connected, so we're at positive 10 volts. And we know this is at zero volts, so we know this entire part of the circuit, this entire part of the circuit is at zero volts. So notice what's gonna happen here. The voltage drop on both of these resistors will be 10 volts. If this entire part is 10 volts and this entire part is zero volts, then you know on this resistor, we must have a drop of 10 volts. And on this resistor, we must also have a drop of 10 volts. And again, that's just another rule you need to be familiar with. Resistors in parallel always have the same drops and voltages. And that's always true when you have resistors in parallel. So, and again, these are in parallel. They will always have the same drop in voltage. So let's analyze this. Let's see what's going on. So again, how do we find the current flowing through this circuit? Well, again, we have to redraw the circuit. 
but we would have to find a resistance that's identical to having a two ohm resistor and a four ohm resistor. So again, so again, and we know how we do this. We explained in the last video how, how if we have resistors in, in parallel, how we find the resistance that they're equivalent to. So if we have these two resistors in parallel, they're identical to having one four third ohm resistor. So now that we know this, we can find the current flowing through the circuit. And again, we use Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. And again, remember, this form of Ohm's law is, is when describing an entire circuit. So we have a 10-volt battery, and it equals the current flowing through the circuit multiplied by the resistance, the overall resistance of the circuit. And we know we have a total resistance of the circuit of 4 third ohms. So therefore, we know the overall resistance is 4 third ohms. So now if we were to solve this, we would get a current, we would solve a current of 7.5 amps. So now we know the current flowing through this circuit is 7.5 amps. And again, and we know the same thing for this equation, for this circuit. They essentially represent the same thing. And again, we know this circuit also has the same overall resistance and with this voltage. So this circuit also has 7.5 amps going through it. That's how much amp is going through the circuit. And again, but something important to realize, as we explained, this part, there's 7.5 amps going through this part. And at this part, there's 7.5 amps going through. And at this part, there's 7.5 amps going through. But something important to realize, so we know right here, or we could say at this exact point, there's 7.5 amps going through. And we know at this point, there's 7.5 amps going through. But something important to realize is, would we say there's 7.5 amps going through here and 7.5 amps going through here? Well, no, because that, that would add up to to 15 amps that would add up to 15 amps which again with the conservation of charge essentially the point is that if we have 7.5 amps going through here and 7.5 amps going through here that 7.5 amps is going to diverge and some of that amperage is going to go through here and some of that amperage is going to go through here so so therefore how do we determine how much amperage is going through here and how much amperage is going through here well again we can use our equations that we talked about we know the drop in voltage of a resistor equals the current going through that resistor multiplied by the resistance of that resistor. And again, we know this equation is applied to a single resistor. And again, we can use this on this resistor. How? Well, again, we know the drop in voltage here was 10 volts. We explained this was at zero volts and this was at 10 volts. So we know we had a drop in voltage of 10 volts. So we know with this resistor, we had a drop of 10 volts. And that equals the current multiplied by the resistance of the resistor. And we have a 4 ohm resistor. So therefore, you could solve the current would be 2.5 amps. So we have a 2.5 amp current. So therefore, we know in this resistor, we have 2.5 amps of current. 2.5 amps of current. So again, we explain that using this equation. So now let's use this equation for this circuit, for, our, for this resistor. So again, if we want to find the delta V, the drop in voltage of a resistor, we know that it equals the current flowing through that resistor multiplied by the resistance of that resistor. And again, we explained this resistor has a drop of 10 volts. We've explained that. We've explained that. So the drop in voltage is 10 volts. This resistor has a drop of 10 volts. And again, that equals the current multiplied by the resistance of that resistor. So we have a 2 ohm resistor. So now if we were to solve for the current we would get 5 amps. So the current flowing through this resistor is 5 amps. Now let's think about it. Does this make sense? Well, we said we have 7.5 amps going through here and 7.5 amps going through here. And we see, so that 7.5 amps, 5 amps goes here and 2.5 amps go here. And again, we had the conservation of charge is, is satisfied. We had 7.5 amps. And so some of it went here, 5 amps went here, and 2.5 amps went here. So, so this makes sense. So, so this, this, this makes sense. The, the, these, these answers make sense. And again, we know we have 5 amps going through here and 2.5 amps going through here. Then they meet up again, so we have 7.5 amps going through here. And again, so this makes sense. And you might wonder, if we had 7.5 amps, why does more current go through here relative to here? Well, again, we have less resistance. We have less resistance here, so we're going to have more current. And we have half the resistance, so we have half the resistance relative here, so we're going to have double the current. 
But again, so the point is, is to be aware of this conservation of charge. So if we if we have 7.5 amps going through here, then we have 7.5 amps going through here, but that current is going to diverge and it's going to split. And we can determine how much goes through here and how much goes through here, essentially using this equation, which represents single resistors. And again, so the key points is when we have resistors in parallel, they're both going to have the same drop in voltage. And again, when we have these two uh, resistors in, in, in parallel, we know that that current is going to diverge. And some current's going, going to go through here and some current's going to go through here. And we can determine that using these equations. So now let's do 